All right. How's it going guys? Today we are going to compare my 1969 Volkswagen bus, Westfalia, and my, my father's 1961 uh, VW single cab. All right, so first we're gonna talk about some of the key features, like differences between the bay window and the split bus. Um, so just starting out, kind of the facial features, what's different. The split bus has that classic V shape on it that everybody knows when they see a bus with the two split windows. Um, the bay window is kind of different. It's the more modern, kind of upgraded version. A lot of people don't like it as much because it's, um, I don't know, it's, they just don't like the look. And so it's, oh, it's different. Uh, also driving a bay window, some have said is like, oh, it's like driving a big marshmallow. Um, so they do dry a little different, but yeah, just facial features. It's got a big old window, big kind of ugly windows, smaller logos, the vents down there instead of up at the top, uh, lower down um, turn signals and uh, running lights. Uh, also, after 68, they couldn't have the glass over the, or after 67, they couldn't have the glass over the sealed beam headlights, so they had to switch to this front headlight system. That's kind of why also the bug looks like that too, is just US law. Um, yeah, so let's just go into it first and kind of look at some of the stuff um, which makes the bay window kind of drive different. So when you get inside of a bay window, if you can kind of see, it's just, it kind of sits taller than a, uh, uh, split window, uh, you're kind of taller, there's a little bit more leg room, uh, you're just, I don't know, a little bit more up there, but inside of a bay window, there is much more room for activities, kind of, there's much more leg room, um, you can kind of see way more outside of the, uh, front window, because it is larger, um, so yeah, I daily drove this for three years, and after riding in that, when, you know, on occasion, it's just like, oh, this is way more cramped, kind of, some of the later split windows, I think after 62 or 63, they did get better and they're kind of more, they kind of, kind of ride more like this. But um, yeah, that's kind of just the main feature of the bay window. Um, another big difference is you have the big plastic dash, padded dash, that was another safety feature that US law required. So it has a big padded dash, which is kind of ugly when comparing it to like the nice, uh, you know, satin uh, paint colored dash. Wood, uh, metal dash they get there um you know other key things this comes stock with a fuel gauge that one didn't come stock with fuel gauge uh you know, common for these to have radios and stuff some of them don't uh but yeah you know kind of just basic comfort of life things that is you can definitely tell it's much older it was a design from the uh 55 was the first time that interior was used and then this is 60 so that's 13 years um you know other things that's got a parcel tray that's got uh, glove box, bench seat versus walkthrough seats, which were much more common on bay windows than in uh, split buses. So yeah, that's kind of just the main difference on the just like main cab interior of bay windows and split windows. Um, let's, if you look in the split window, again, you see it's kind of just older. Um, doesn't have bucket seats, it has bench seat. Um, doesn't have the shoulder belts. It's, yeah, it's got a parcel tray, all that fun stuff. So other key features, uh, differences between bay windows and split windows. In a bay window, you'll have things like the uh, IRS rear suspension, uh, independent rear suspension. So it kind of rides a little better. That's why some people say it rides like a marshmallow. Whereas this, you have the sway bar with the, um, the gearboxes, which uh, lower it down. Um, I personally think working on bay windows are much easier. If you look in the back of this, um, there is a lot of room to work on the engine, especially once you take the bumper off and the apron off. I've taken this engine out probably six times. And I think if you are going to get like, if you're looking into buses for like your first, your first bus, I would really recommend the early bay window. That's what this is. Cause it's the apron removes and the bumper removes. So it's really easy to take the engine out. That's something you don't have with the later bay windows. It also has a type one engine. If you're in Europe, they all have the type one engine, but, um, yeah, it has the Type 1 engine, which is the most popular engine, like one of the most built engines in the world. So it's really easy to find parts for. Um, yeah, and they're just really solid engines. We put a 16, this has a 1641 in it because I blew up my 1600. That was one of the times I um, had to take the engine out. I think it was the last time or the second or last time. Um, yeah, no, it's just kind of easier to work on. You can see in this, you don't just have a push button to open it. It's kind of more 
You should have a church key, but a screwdriver works as well. It's got a less robust prop system. And if you look in there, it's much more close up front. It's much more cramped. Um, yeah, so it's just a little harder to work on. They have the same engines. Uh, this came stock with, I think, a bastard 40 horsepower or like a 1200cc engine. Uh, this is 61. But yeah, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing where if you do go stock, the 1200cc engines are very reliable. Like they're, they're pretty bulletproof, but it is kind of, I don't know. They're, they're, it's a little harder to find parts for because the 1600cc engine is like the, the engine that everybody has. Um, so yeah, uh, any other differences? The, um, just minor stuff, uh, the split windows, the early split windows, they have the crow's foot rims. These have the 14 inch rims, which you also see in the later split windows. Um, yeah, rear windows smaller, rear windows bigger in this, you know, the more air comes down to the, uh, engine. So this, this cools better than that. If you can see, it has those small vents. Oftentimes you'd see people put, not for the single cabs as much, but you'd see people put like the scoops on them. So they kind of act like that. Uh, yeah, I really like the early bay windows cause they're, the one con is they look like a bay window, which they're more ugly, but they, uh, they kind of act like a more refined split. Whereas you go on with a later bay window, like a 72, and it's like, they just started using the type four engine. So it's a little bit more, it's not as refined. So, you know, there's, it's, it's just, you know, any other, not, I'm not going to say it's like any other car from the seventies, but it's, I don't know. I'm not as big of a fan of them. I'd still like to drive one or own one eventually. Cause the, the later seventies bay windows do have pretty cool, uh, interiors, really, really nice campers. So yeah. All right, so now we're going to talk about the differences between a single cab and a camper. Um, so this is the SO67 camper. It's the early bay window camper. Um, kind of has the same interior as like the SO42, kind of. So there are some minor differences like the rear, I'll show you later, but the rear net is like, it was a cabinet in the SO42. But this is kind of like the staple late 60s Volkswagen camper. Whereas this is kind of the the single cabs didn't really change. They were work vehicles. They didn't really change much from their conception in the early fifties to really the end of when they stopped making them. Yeah, they, they made them all throughout the bay window years. And of course they're, they're different because they're, you know, split window to bay window, but the whole functionality of the single cab is kind of just the same throughout. So, uh, yeah, let's start with the single cab cause it's kind of simpler. Um, get our church key. Uh, or screwdriver. Um, yeah, so the single cab, we have the fabric on it or the carpet on it right now. We probably shouldn't, but, um, it's got, it's really nice. It's got a long bed. I think it's what, eight and a half, nine foot bed. Uh, so it's an eight and a half foot bed, which is kind of a standard long bed and it's got, it's, it's a drop gate. So each of the gates drops down. So it turns into a flat bed. It's really utilitarian. It's a really nice truck to have. I think these on the market now are only, you can get them for like 20 grand, which it's not great, but um, as far as like a classic truck that we use this, like we actually put gravel in it and like we take it on the Shasta snow trip. So it, it gets worn. I think last year it got uh, an axle broke. And so on the side of the road, they replaced one of the rear axles. But yeah, so this, um, the gate folds up and my favorite feature kind of of these single cabs is a lot of like single cab trucks, there's not like a lot of room to store your stuff that you don't want like visible for people to steal. So it has the treasure chest where you can conveniently place all of your tools where as a Volkswagen owner, you're going to need them because cars break down. So yeah, it's, um, I don't know, this is probably four feet long about and about as wide as the car. So maybe five, six feet. Um, and yeah, you can store all your tools. It's really convenient. Uh, we put those like, not quite the, the yellow bin, larger crates like that, but like there's a smaller crate that we put in there and it just folds in or uh, just slides in. Uh, and there's also way more room back there behind the gas tank. So you can kind of 
just keep a lot of stuff in there. It's really nice, uh, just for storage. It's kind of the, the main feature of these single cabs is the long bed and the uh, treasure chest. They um, really utilitarian trucks. Um, I think they're also, since they're buses, they're also compact cars, so they fit really nicely. You know, they're really easy to park, stuff like that. So yeah, that's kind of the main gist of the single cab. Um, two big things. Let's go over to my bus to the uh, show off some of the Westfalia features. So all bay windows have the sliding door and then you go in and just right away, this is really dirty because I mean, I cleaned it out, but it was really dirty. Uh, it had some mold in it. <laughs> um, they have the fridge where you can put ice in there and then this just keeps it cool. Um, you know, and this, this kind of kitchenette unit. Um, yeah, you just keep your utensils, stuff like that. Right, so as I was saying, yeah, it has this kitchenette unit. It's kind of nice. Some people take them out because they're kind of not really useful. Like when we go camping, we're just going to bring a cooler anyway. And then I'm not ever going to clean anything in the sink because it's kind of gross. And it has a, like a five gallon tank in there. But again, if you fill that up, it's just going to, you know, you're going to have a five gallon tank of water that you can't really like pour or so yeah, you kind of just, it's not really useful. It's, it's nice to have cause it's like, it's part of the Westfalia-ness of it. But again, it's not really something you keep. Um, just going into the car, kind of echoey now. Uh, some of the main features here, uh, it's got a fold up table, um, jump seat. So you can fit probably comfortably if you're going on a road trip, three people back here, two people in the front. So go on a road trip with four of your buddies. Or like if you're a family person, you, you know, you have your family. Go on a road trip with them. Uh, you know, you got a lot of privacy with the curtains and stuff like that. It's a really, really fun like car to just have and drive. I bought this car when I was 16, and I'm 20 now, and I daily, uh, dailyed it up until like I was just before I turned 20, so about three years, two, two, three years. It was about a while when I was just like fixing it up. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really fun car for like people that don't have a lot of responsibilities. Now that I'm like an adult, I need to have an Accord, but. Uh, yeah, it's got some other features like, uh, the tent, the rooftop tent's always really nice. Like if you just pull up somewhere, it's like a hot summer day and you want to, oh, I want my car to like cool off while I'm at work and like, uh, you know, it's not, not any crackheads in the area. So I can trust it with the roof being up. Um, you just let it cool off while you're at work. Um, stuff like that. Uh, it's, you know, and then people are like, oh, it's got a, got a rooftop tent. What's going on there? And you can kind of be that guy. Uh, another, one of my favorite features, it's got the bed in the back, um, back when I was at community college, you know, between classes, take some naps, <laughs> did that multiple times, uh, yeah, so this is, this is nice if you want to go camping, uh, I've used it plenty of times, I was a boy scout, so that was pretty nice in my last few years there, uh, it's got the bed in the back, uh, standard twin size bed, maybe even a little big, uh, bigger, um, I don't know if it's quite as long. But uh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, got a closet where you can store shirts. I think that's the shirt that I'm just like, oh, if I need to work on my car. Got my proud Canadian kettle. Stuff like that. So those are kind of like the main features you see in a bus. Uh, make sure to comment if you have any questions about it. Um, other things, there's an AC outlet, but nobody you can't, I, I mean, I don't really use it. So somebody messed up the wiring beforehand and I just haven't figured it out since. But uh, yeah, tons of storage for when you go camping. There's a net in the back. Um, there's a linen closet, which I store my front curtains in. Um, Cause they're supposed to be curtains that like go into these rails and then like clip up. So you have a complete privacy. So I keep those in there. Other camping supplies. Uh, Cameron, is there anything else you think I should all right. Yeah, so that's pretty much like the main just behind the Westfolia. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's fun little fun little car to have if you don't, you know, have like you don't need to get to work on time every day. That's kind of what I had it for when I was working a place where I didn't need to get to work on time every day. But uh, yeah, so that's those are the main differences between the two, the the split bus single cab and the Bay Window Westfalia. Make sure to subscribe, like, or comment if you have any anything you want to say or any questions or anything like that. Um, yeah, have a good one.